The High Court has finally freed TV journalist Jerky Maribe on bail while denying a co-accused Joseph Irungu bail. High Court Judge James Wakenga ruled this morning that Irungu is flight risk and has access to guns which can intimidate witnesses. Maribe has been freed on a cash bail of 1 million shillings with three sureties of a similar amount or 2 million shilling bond with one surety of a similar amount. The prosecution raised only two issues against her. That is to say, she is an influential media personality who is likely to immediate and influence the nature of the case. B, her house is a secondary crime scene and some potential witnesses are, are employees whom she has authority over. The following facts emerges from the affidavit by the prosecution and the second accused person. She is a well-known media personality with influential pro uh, friends as confirmed by a letter attached to affidavit from the senator for Nairobi. Her employer is very supportive of her as confirmed by the letter attached to the prevail report. She is a mother of one with very supportive family and friends. The fact that she was in love with the first accused is not disputed as confirmed by affidavit. The only issue in this dispute is whether she is a person who is likely to interfere with witnesses or evidence. The only witness named is the second accused ourselves, and to my mind, our evidence seems to be related to what the prosecution calls secondary crime scene, whatever that means. As submitted by Mr. Katua, the accused was arrested 10 days after the commission of the offense, and there is no indication by the prosecution that the second accused interfered or attempted to interfere with the witnesses. Joey's display of guns on social media seems to be finally haunting him. Justice Wakianga believes that his open display of firearms is a clear indication that he is able to marshal them and use them to his advantage, maybe silencing then said witnesses in the case. Maribe's release comes as a great reprieve for her family, especially her son. The court has however directed that Joseph Irungu be given proper treatment at Kenyatta Hospital following a gunshot wound he sustained after allegedly shooting himself. Who was allegedly with him at the scene of the crime. There is a material placed before the court to the effect that after the commission of the offence, the first accused destroyed or attempted to destroy material evidence including an alleged piece of clothing which he had worn on the material day. The first accused is silent on this material. The first accused is known to the family of the victim, including a brother who has sworn an affidavit confirming that he is the one who introduced the first accused to the deceased. This is an allegation once again of factual nature, not yet uh, tested by examination. There is an allegation that once again of factual nature, not yet tested by cross examination that the first accused has been positively placed at the scene by way of identification parade and since the first accused is alleged to know the scene of the crime very well, I find that there's a possibility that he might know the identity of those witnesses and there's a possibility of interfering with them. You see a flight risk who is likely to abscond the jurisdiction of this court. The picture that emerges from the prosecution's evidence as set out here in above <coughs> And the pre bail report of the accused <coughs> is that is a male version of Slay Queen, which for lack of better terminology, I'll call a woman eater. Irungu has been in custody since the arrest on September 25th, while Maribo was arrested on October 1st this year. The two were charged with a gruesome murder of Monica Kemani.